Morning. So today we want to look at gravitational fields and we are still focusing on satellite motion but we're going to have a look at this term orbital motion and really what we want to describe when we're dealing with orbital motion is what is the motion of the satellite. So here I've got an example of the Earth-Sun system um, and we all know that the Earth rotates around the sun or orbits the sun um, and the things that we want to be able to discover though with this is we want to be able to be able to ascertain what is the acceleration of the earth now it is accelerating because it's moving in a circular path what is its velocity and that's how fast it's moving and also, what's its period? Now, remember that the period is time for one revolution to occur, or one orbit to occur. So we can go back to Newton's uh, universal law of gravity, and we can say mass one, mass two, all on the distance in between them. Now, when we're talking about the Sun and the Earth system, our mass 1 would be our smaller mass, which is the Earth, and our mass 2 is the larger, uh, larger body, which is the Sun. And the radius is taken from the centre of both masses. So we may, must make sure that we don't take our radius um, from the surfaces, because that sort of skews our calculations a little bit. So we'll just get rid of that and we make sure that our radiuses are being taken from the center of both bodies. So here, what we're gonna say is, if we use Newton's second law, is mass equals acceleration. And that's also known as, if you like, the relative gravity that that body is experiencing in respect to the other one. And then uh, I might just change this and say that this is mass 1, m1, m2, all on r squared. And then we can do a simple calculation here. And we, we generally write this in terms of our acceleration being g, large m, which represents the larger body, all over r squared and that's our equation that we need to retain for acceleration now when we're looking at velocity okay we need to remember that acceleration equals v squared on r that's taken from uh, if you like circular motion and we can say here that g m r squared is another way that we experience, we, we express uh, acceleration. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna resolve this with r, and this r squared here, I'm just gonna write it as r times r equals v squared. And what we can do here is we can cancel out the r's, we can square root both sides, and we end up getting our equation for velocity, which is V equals the square root of the gravitational constant, the larger mass, all over the radius. Okay. And that's our equation for velocity. Now, if we start thinking about our period, well, we know that our velocity is given by the distance that an object travels over the time it takes. And remember our period here, our period is a time for one revolution. So commonly we represent our period by a capital T, and we can say that the distance is the circumference. So if I go back here, you know, we're talking about the circumference of the circle, and that's two pi r. So we're going to have 
2 pi r as our circumference and then we just rearrange the equation to give 2 pi r on v. And this is our equation for our period which we can apply. So they, they, these three equations are really important for us to be able to describe different characteristics of the motion of the satellite or a body that's in orbit. So I want to have a look at an example that we're all aware of and it's based on a question. Okay, And the question is, what is the period of the Earth's orbit around the Sun? Essentially what we're asking is, how long does it take the Earth to rotate, to complete one rotation or one orbit of the Sun? Now, we all know that that is going to be equal to one year and commonly that is 365 and we might even be a little bit cheeky and say 0.25 years because we have to account for leap years. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to explore this. Now we need to know a couple of uh, a couple of characteristics or a couple of um, values for the system itself. So the first value that, that we need to know is we need to know what the mass of the sun is going to be. So mass of the sun. And we know from our information that the mass of the sun is given as 1.9 times 1.989 times 10 to the 30 kilograms. The mass of the earth, okay, we don't really need to know the mass of the Earth. And I'll show you why we don't need to know it. But we do need to know how far the Earth is set from the Sun. And we have to take that from the centre of both bodies. Now we know that the distance between the Earth centre and the Sun centre is approximately... Okay, approximately, and I'm hoping I'm showing it... It's 150 million kilometers. So it's quite large, quite, quite, quite a big length. And in astronomical terms, we call this one astronomical unit. But for our purposes today, we're going to use this value as our value of the distance between the two bodies. So the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to ascertain what the acceleration is. Here. So the acceleration is going to equal the square root of g m r, um, r squared. And if we plug in our values, we're going to get the gravitational constant times the mass of the sun. all over, and I'll just kneading this up a little bit for us, okay, because we're squaring everything. So 150 million kilometers, I have to convert that into meters and square it. And we get our acceleration as 0 0.0059 meters per second squared. So it doesn't seem like that we're accelerating that fast. And probably that's a good thing because if we were accelerating really fast and we were standing still on the Earth, we would feel it. We would feel it as a force. Um, but, but the Earth is actually not accelerating that fast. That doesn't mean that the Earth is not moving fast. It just means that its rate of change of movement or rate of change of speed as it moves in a circular path is, uh, is minor. Okay. So what we want to then do is we want to find the velocity. Okay, and I must say this, for to answer this question, we don't really need to know the acceleration, but I wanted to show it because I think it's a good, um, good example for you to be a, to know how to find acceleration if you get get a question that asks the same thing. But if you're finding the velocity here. Well, we can say here that V is given by the square root of GM all on R, and V here equals um, square root, 
put in the gravitational constant, the mass of the sun, and then the distance that is set between the Earth and the sun. And we get a velocity of 29, 29.57 meters per second. Now that's very fast. That's very fast from our current understanding. Maybe not so fast if we consider the speed of light, but if we consider the everyday existence that we, uh, we have as far as, you know, moving in cars, walking, running, doing various things that you do in human activity, that's extremely fast. We don't really feel it though. And part of it is, is because of the law of inertia. We've been set at this speed from the time beginning. You know, so since you were born, you were moving at the as the speed as the Earth was ro rotating around. So you don't really feel it. It's like um, being a car that's been travelling at a hundred kilometres for an hour, and, and and you're stuck in the car and it hasn't changed speed. You don't you don't feel any change of momentum or um, you, the inertia just carries you through. So so we are moving quite fast as a planet around the sun. But this doesn't give us our period. So we have our velocity here. And to find our period, what we're going to say is that's 2 pi r on the velocity. And this period is given by 2 pi times 150 times 10 to the 9 all over v. Uh, and we found V to be 29.739.57. And we get our period equaling 30. Okay. So roughly close to 32 million seconds. Now that doesn't really mean much to us, 32 million seconds, because we don't experience a year in terms of seconds. We experience in terms of one year, 12 months, 365 days. So what we need to do is do a conversion to be able to put this in days. So with our time, we're gonna put down the time in seconds. Okay, then we're gonna divide it by 60 seconds. 60 minutes in an hour, 24 hours in a day. And this value comes out as 366.79 days, which is uncannily close to what we expected it would be, um, which was 365.25. However, it's not exactly that. Um, why is that? Well, a lot of it has to do with uh, approximations. So approximations in, in the mass of the sun, approximations with our radius, okay? And all of these approximations have a level of error in them that actually contributes to uh, this, this value being a little bit off what we experience. It's not significantly off, um, but it is a little bit off. Um, one thing you just gotta know is that error is mount up Okay, the more accurate we can use our values, the more uh, closer we are going to get to reality with our solution and our answers of our solutions. All right, thank you.